I'm Jeff Gum. This is David and Nick Lyle with Black Oxygen. What's up, everyone out there? They're about to perform their new single, Butterfly, which has only been out a week, and it's already hit the top 100 Billboard We're music We're so chart. thankful. We're so thankful, everyone out there. We appreciate you supporting this song. Uh, it was an iconic hit, but you know, uh, thank you to Shifty for giving us the blessing to revive the new Butterfly for the new generation. This is Butterfly, everyone. Black Oxygen, new anthem. Let's go. She got sex appeal, I can feel Too much is never enough You always there to lift me up when these times get rough I was lost in my bad ever since you've been around You're the woman that I want so I'm putting it down Putting it down, putting it down Come my lady, come, come my lady You're my butterfly, sugar, baby Come my lady, you're my pretty baby I'll make your legs shake, you make me go crazy Come my lady, come, come my lady You're my butterfly, sugar, baby Come my lady, you're my pretty baby I'll make your legs shake, you make me go crazy I don't deserve you unless it's some kind of hidden message You show me life is precious and I guess it's true To tell the truth I really never knew till I met you I was lost and confused, twisted and used up Knew a better life existed but thought that I missed it My lifestyle's wild, I was living like a wild child Trapped on a short lease, but rode a police miles so what's happening now? I see the sun breaking, shining through dark clouds In a vision of you standing out in the crowd now Come my lady, come, come my lady You're my butterfly, sugar, baby Come my lady, you're my pretty baby I'll make your legs shake, you make me go crazy Come my lady, come, come my lady You're my butterfly, sugar, baby Come my lady, you're my pretty baby I'll make your legs shake, you make me go crazy You make me go you make me go, you make me go crazy, everybody, here we go! Crazy. Yeah. Just like this! Crazy. Hey, sugar mama, come and dance with me! The smartest thing you ever did was take a chance with me! Whatever tickles you fancy, girls, me and you like Sid and Nancy! So sexy, almost evil, talking about butterflies in my head! I used to think that happy endings were only in the books I read! But you made me feel alive when I was almost dead! Feeling empty space, love I used to chase! As far as I can see, it don't get better than this! So, butterfly, here is a song, and it's sealed with a kiss and a thank you, miss! Let's go! Come and dance with me! Come and dance with me! Come and dance with me Come my lady, come, come my lady You're my butterfly, sugar, baby Come my lady, you're my pretty baby I'll make your legs shake, you make me go crazy Come my lady, come, come my lady You're my butterfly, sugar, baby Come my lady, you're my pretty baby I'll make your legs shake, you make me go crazy Come and dance with me Come and dance with me Thank you, everyone. That was awesome, you guys. Exactly. So, how did that come about? Because that was great, you guys. Like, it's this song. Yeah. I remember this song. It was a big hit, even for me. I love this song when it first came out. Oh yeah, it's classic. Yeah, the, right? the story mm -hmm. of that was um, years ago. It was like about three, four years ago. Now uh, we were performing at the Whiskey A Go Go, and um, Shifty had came up to me after we performed, and he tapped my shoulder. He's like, "Hey, man." That was an awesome set. I, you know, uh, take down my number. Maybe we could rock some shows together, work together. So we uh, we kept in touch uh, that way. And then uh, they were going on tour like in 2019, right, Nick? I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 2019. And uh, they had a big tour all across Canada. So 
he invited us to open direct support for them all across Canada, and that was really cool. We've played yeah, was how how long after what? So you met him where at uh you originally met him at one of your shows or one of his shows? We yeah, met out him in L.A. Yeah. In yeah. L.A. Okay. Yeah, yeah, with, with the Whiskey Go Go, and and it was it was about that was about four years ago. So and then, you were you were performing there. We were performing. Okay. And yeah, and then and I then there we were was both performing. Oh, you were performing. Oh, Shifty performing was performing. With them yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It was yeah, a yeah. show. It was a show where they hap- we they booked us together. Gotcha. Yeah. The similar styles of music and stuff. And then and you hadn't known each other yet at that point. No, no, no. no. And then and then. Uh, yeah, about a year later, he invited us to open on uh, direct support for this tour they were doing it across Canada. So we've performed pretty much everywhere in the United States. Like years back, we did a tour that, you know, we did like 60 shows in a row, like years back. And then we've toured like pretty much everywhere, right, Nick? The whole country, right? Pretty much everywhere. I think we haven't got to Maine in the contiguous United States. I think it's the only one. Wow. And, and, and the spot <laughs> that we didn't, we, we didn't make out the country yet, so... That was a lot of fun. I mean, even though it's just can't, you know, Canada's up there, but that was a lot of fun. And it's also fun, mm-hmm. you know, just it, playing music is a beautiful thing because, you know, there's a different way people, you know, take in music, whether it's here or in Texas or Florida. And, you know, uh, it's, it's a cool experience when you're going to play music because you may have a song that may have saved someone's life or, you know, like, Hey, that song made my day better. Cause I have a bad job or, you know, this, that, and you know, it's, it's cool that something could inspire like that. You know, like when you're not even really as a writer, totally thinking about that, but we did that tour with Shifty across Canada and it was, it was a lot of fun. And at the end of the tour, we were in where at Nick and they didn't even speak English. Quebec and all that mm. Quebec city just over on the east yeah, side it was, there. It was really cool. Like, and then we were playing and then after no one speak English, but they liked the music. And, and then, uh, we, you know, Nick and I were on doing different releases and stuff of our own. And, uh, um, Shifty had, uh, come on our podcast because we started a podcast and we have had like Danny Trejo and Matt Storm Guns N' Roses now. And mm-hmm. Shifty, Shifty's like, yeah, I'd love to come on your podcast. And, um, we were doing that podcast um, when we were done. He's like, "Hey, man, I've been waiting. You know, I've you know, I think it'd be really cool. You know, I think you guys- he actually floats the idea during that podcast. Yeah. if you watch it back, yeah, the Ooh. idea came up on the podcast. Yeah, if, okay, uh, it's online. Everyone, you could go. And he starts to talk about it, and then afterwards, Black Oxygen Inspiration Podcast. Exactly. So, so after after um, we were talking and we were just going to get some food, and he said, "Man, you guys, you guys are really good guys, and." You know, you guys are really hard workers. I, I love you and your brother, down earth, good people, but super talented. And he's like, God gave me this blessing, and I and he's like, I've been waiting for someone to do like a good, like the big cover. But he's like, you know, I'd like to give it to you guys. You guys deserve this. I mean, he's you've been working for a minute, and he's like, uh, you know, would you like to do it? And I was like, absolutely. I mean, I was, I, I was like, I'd love to do that. I mean, I I love this song growing up, but. You know, it's like a lot of people might know Crazy Town or Shifty from the music, but we know Shifty on a personal level. And, and uh, you know, just as a friend saying, hey, man, you know, I'd like to, you know, pass that baton, that torch on. I was like, what was that, that like? To have yeah, that, that was super cool. <laughs> so that, that was great. Super cool. And, and um, I said, okay, sounds good. Let's do it. Let's, let's crush it. Um, you know, so we went to the studio and, how many years later was this after the original tour you met him on? How how long after did this in happen? In 2019 was we went on that tour and then this 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 was Might uh, have about been a year and a half. Okay. About. So a couple yeah. years later, man. Yeah. Yeah, this was this was a, a year and a half a year and a half a couple years ago. So we started talking about it and then months later, like 4 or 5 months later in 2022 um we went to the the studio and you know, Shifty had a pretty clear um, vision, but, you know, he's like, I want to keep it true to your guys' sound too. And, you know, um, we love all styles of music. Black Auction has all styles of music, but, you know, it's like we, um, you know, Nick and I, we just, and when I say styles, I mean, we have grew up with influences from, you know, Guns N' Roses to Eminem, or what are some of your influences, Nick? At the end of the day, everything. I mean, uh, yeah, you can you learn can, from everything. You can learn something from every kind of music. I listen to a lot of classical music too when I'm rolling around. Just it's so much different things you could hear. But at the end of the day, I think I would have to say that my 
biggest influences are probably like David Bowie, uh, Young Thug, back in the day, ASAP Rocky. Um, but then again, there's stuff like Boston that I love that I always go back to. The 1975, of course, I listen to them all the time. Uh, Draco the Ruler. Absolutely. Yeah, I even love Tech, Tech Nine. He's a friend of ours too, you know, a, a legendary rapper. And, yeah, absolutely. But, but we, what, you, what you all hear out there on the recording um, is, is like, you know, we just went to the studio and had some fun. And, and you know, the song, I, I remember someone was hearing it and said, you guys worked on this for like five months. And I said, no, like the song was really recorded in a matter of, and done in a matter of like three days or something. Oh, really? Wow. And most yeah. people don't know that, but it was, I just knocked out my vocals, all my vocals you hear in the song in about four hours or something, or two or three hours. Nick, it might have been an hour for both of us. Yeah, it actually was way less even. I, I knocked <laughs> yeah. out my vocals. It was I fast. think we were there for like six hours of a day, but yeah, I think vocals I, yeah, but, was only like an hour. Yeah, I think my vocals were knocked out realistically, if I think about it now, in about an hour tops. Yeah. The Nick's was, you know, less. Uh, and yeah. the Nick did all the nice stuff on the smooth stuff on the song. And yeah, Shif musically it's different. Like, uh, and I like it. It and, sounds and really was, good. Shifty yeah, was doing. Yeah. Shifty was like, "We're going to use Nick's voice, like on all the backings, because Nick could sing better than me." You know, better. Shifty's like, "Nick could sing better than me." He say so, like the tone, the smooth. So he's like, tone. "We're going to use the soft tone <laughs> in Nick's for the back layers. We're going to yours. Yours is kind of more out there, David. We're going to use yours on the chorus, but together it's just you know having fun in a room, mm -hmm. and um, and I was you know really." really proud of, of what came out of it. And, you know, as an artist, we've been doing this, you know, professionally for a minute. So some releases, you know, do great and better than others and some are okay. And, you know, um, so every release, you know, when you, when you post it, when you have your, your team, you know, projected to the world or whoever your label, your in investment backing is or gets it out the best possible, you know, we just make sure every time we get it best possible. And it's really not up to the artist at the end of the day. There's a lot of things that come into play. Like you hear albums that are probably the greatest you've heard, but they're not famous. And 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 I, I believe in a bigger picture. I've I you know, I I believe in the universe. We're all here for a reason, and there's a bigger picture. And certain things happen with energy and frequency is what I believe in, and when they're supposed to. And you know, that's why some songs that are amazing, I feel, aren't hits and some are. It's, sometimes it's not advertised right. Sometimes it's not, not, not the right timing. But this one came out and I, I was just, I'm already honestly so thankful where it's at. Yeah, and, no. any, and if it goes any higher, that's wonderful. <laughs> but, you know, it came out, I think it has now over in like just five days and over 400 or 500,000 views and uh, tons of streams. It, it, it rode the... The biggest one of the biggest charts in the world, the the Apple, it's on the 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 pop chart at it started like at 70, 50, 40, 30, 12, and now it's at eleven. Um, you know, I'm just honestly thankful as an artist because this is the we've had many great releases and top most added billboards, but as far as you know, this is like the most commercial main success because it's not a lot of our past releases were on you know, mainstream rock or and stuff like that. Or this is this is our first ever branch in our career where we've made it to the top, the pop. We're the Taylor Swifts. Yeah. We're yeah. the Justin Bieber's. Shout out to yeah. Justin Bieber. <laughs> we're where all the top people are. And um I'm just really thankful and everyone again, you know, Nick and I, we appreciate everyone that's commented. Always every day. Commented and shared. You know, we'll look at the comments on there and 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 thank you, Jeff, for even you know, having an interest to have us here today. You know, absolutely, yeah. And it's wild that it's such a successful song. It only took three days to make because if you think about, <laughs> it's so musically different. How does that transpire into? You just walk in the studio and you're like, oh, this, I'm going to do this beat. When we went in, there was more of a gangsterish, darkish beat, and it was kind of dark, too dark, and yeah. and that's why we didn't use that one. But it was. And then we recorded the vocals. So the vocals were done. And then there was a more brighter version. One had a guitar in it. And then, you know, we were all sitting there and, and Shifty was the one that was like, uh, you know, this is this is for the new generation. Let's, you know, um, I even saw a couple comments that someone said, um, how come the guitar riff was in there? 
uh, that was uh, Shifty was Shifty was like, let's just yeah. keep it more pop. Let's take the guitar riff out. Let's make it pop for the new generation. Let's also, the guitar riff is in there. The melody is. It's just a vocal it's in, part now. It's in now. the vocals. But but mm. you know his thing was he wanted to make it totally different than the original, but keep the same roots and keep it cool and chill and something you could listen to at a club or a party. And and um, then when we were done with the song, um, you know, I know Shifty wanted to keep elements from the original, and I thought that that would be really cool too with elements of of new shots. So. You know, Shifty, Shifty, uh, you know, did his hair blonde like in the original one, and there was kind of like when you're re remaking a movie, there were shots of in the jungle setting, because sometimes in the half a billion people that saw the original one, that moment, uh, you know, brings them to a special place from that video, and uh, or someone when I was walking down the street the other day too, someone said, "Hey, I love the new song," that that just hearing the new song brought the special childhood memories back. So, you know, that there's a, I thought it was a cool idea to do the song, but it's also in everyone's subconscious. Pretty, that song, I, I, I don't know exact, but I thought that Shifty had said that it was like 16 times platinum and it, it original was number one on the biggest billboard chart in the world. So, yeah. and it's been in movies, TV shows, still used today. That's just one of those it's songs one, that everyone you ask knows. Yeah, it's one of know? the biggest like, songs in literally the history. Just briefly the, sing the, the chorus. The history of our existence. So they they just used it in the recent Barbie movie. Yeah, yeah, right. the so, original. Right. Yeah. So, so it's like, um, so just to be a part of something that someone knows, and 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 we're very thankful to have that that blessing because out of any artist in in the whole world, you know, I'm just thankful that we were chosen to do that because it's the only original cover of the original. There's there's a there's another version out. Uh, that's great as well, the eco version that has yeah, that. different versions and stuff. But this is the only one in history that's a remake with the original artist, which is which and, I, is a beautiful thing. And yeah. the cool thing about that too is that on the uh, on the original, he does verse one and two, but he said that he had written the third verse on that original. So on this one, he actually took that third verse, which he hadn't done on the original song, which was pretty cool. In Crazy Town, there was another singer back in the day, and the other singer sung the third verse, but. Shifty said in the studio, he said, I've always wanted to do that verse because I yeah. actually was the one that wrote the, the third verse. Yeah. So he did the third verse on ours. And I think it's a cool combination because it showcases David, Nick, Shifty. And I sing the choruses, but there's elements of Shifty and Nick on there too. What's that process yeah. like of coming up with some, and, and I know you guys do a lot of different genres, but what's that process like of coming up with, you know, a beat or... How do you know when something's really right. going to hit? Because I know us as an audience, we know when we like it, but right, we don't know right, when you're right. sitting there and you're tinkering with di different levels of things. A song can start from all different places, right? So like, I like to start a song on the bass a lot of times, or I like to start a song on the drums a lot of times, or sometimes it'll be like, there'll just be um, a melody that pops into my head, or even a full song will just like show up, and it's like, all right, now we got to figure out how we're going to get this down on wax or on the on the digital files nowadays to uh, get everyone to hear it, but you know it just starts from there and then you kind of build it out. Yeah, and the, uh, the way that the way that it always comes for me is a lot of times uh, I'll be driving down the road or at the gym or I'll have be like it'll come from a dream, you know. I'll wake up. That too. And, and I'll, I'll usually hear the whole song. And do you run out of bed and just uh, you just start yeah, playing? Like, oh, forget it. Uh, so it's like when the song uh, "New Heights" came. Part of it came in a dream. Then I was getting up, going to the gym, and then the rest of the song came. Uh, and then I just called Nick and I recorded. I heard the guitar, so I put, just put the guitar down and recorded all the vocals like in an hour or less. But the 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 best. Yeah. So know. that one started. It was just acoustic guitar. And David's voice, and then we built out the beat all yeah, through that and, I, and made it into a song. I really like that song, and that song has million, uh, a lot of views. And I like that song too because the song in the video "New Heights" it tells our journey from the start until today. So even the video, it starts it starts where I picked up the house, where I picked up my first guitar. It shows like all the crowd shots and the the, the journey, the legacy till today. And "New Heights," you know, tells a story, and I and I, and 
And, and I love the lyric where it says, I look to the greats, I look to the legends, I look to the gods that see the heavens. I always look to the greats, you know, like, you know, someone I started playing music was Slash, but I, I and also Eminem and all these other people. And now on this journey, it's like a lot of the people, whether it's in movies or music, you know, we grew up idolizing. Now some of them are just personal friends. And so at the start, it's kind of a weird thing and you're almost like a little kid inside. Or I'm sure you've experienced that because you make great movies, right? Yeah. You've experienced that, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And then after a while, after it's, it becomes norm, it's it's like, it's just a normal chill thing. And I'm like, all right, um, this is where the universe brought me. I'm where I'm supposed to be. And, and it feels good when you're with high level creatives in the world like that, because there's all a common feeling and, uh, you know, and even like that brought you and I together mm -hmm. and, and everyone out there too. It's like, you know, I don't want to give any details away, but we're working on a really good movie with Jeff and it's going to be the first official, you know, full length feature Nick and I are in, in theaters and everywhere. And, um, you know, Jeff's, Jeff's done like, <laughs> you know, Rambo, uh, you know, Primal with Nicolas Cage, <laughs> Zoe Kravitz, a lot of great movies. Yeah. You know, and and, <laughs> really? and the thing that I the, the about it is is that uh you know that stuff at the end of the day doesn't doesn't matter. It's it's both great that we have cool accolades, but you know, Jeff's someone at the end of the day that that that, that all could go away and we just enjoy hanging out together because there's a sim there's a frequency and energy, you know. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And and also there's an energy of accomplishing all the goals and you know making dreams happen for a positive light to inspire people. But when it comes to, uh, you know, making your dreams happen I, to everyone out there watching, I feel like you got to, you know, like some people, and if you're afraid, you just got to take a stand. Like if you want to be a songwriter, you, you could find, find a guitar and make some songs, record them, find people's emails online that, Maybe your producers that need to work with big artists to get their songs to, you know, you know, there's ways to take steps. And, you know, someone asked us before, and I really truly don't do it. Music and stuff that's like about to be famous or anything like that. My goal is just to let anyone in the world know you can be who you want to be. And the only one that could stop you is yourself. It's fun to work through uh, climbing the mountain. So something like when, when we started out, I would always think like, I wasn't forceful, but I was thinking like, okay, we got to do this, do this, do this, do this, this time. But you, you really learn as you go that, you know, what's for you is for you and mm -hmm. the universe works in, uh, you know, a special way. I think if you're, if you're trying to be the best person you can, you're working hard um, and, and you're on all levels pushing, I think that some real magic happens. Mm -hmm. And what is your opinion or outlook on that too? Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Yep, that's all you can do is just. Yeah. I mean, I've got a list of things. I'm like a list maker, so me I, too, me too. <laughs> I have everything I want to accomplish that day, and it feels good to put a strike through. Oh it. yeah. So I have to do it on paper. Nice. If it's not the same, if I do it on my phone, so I, I, I actually <laughs> physically write it out and come. So like you can a, feel that. Yes. Yes. Well, I have things that just knock off my list on a yeah. daily basis. But um, like, when did you know you were? Music is what you had. This is what you're destined to do. When did you? When was that moment? At at 13 and a half, I remember exactly was when I picked up the guitar because my uh, I was cleaning out my grandfather's basement. He had bought uh, an acoustic guitar years back, and it was kind of dusty. And at the and it was like again, the universe works in interesting ways. So it was like a couple weeks before, and the we the, on the TV there was. Um, Bell Revolver, there's a song playing called Slither. And, it, and um, right when Slash, you know, picked up the guitar sideways and just going crazy. And 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 I all, you know, I was like, and all these people were just having fun in the audience. I was like, well, that that's what I want to do forever. Then I was at my grandfather's house and I picked up the guitar and I was like, there was a special feeling when I picked it up. And I just remember I started playing and and uh I I I uh even looked up and 
got a good, like for a guitar teacher. And I was like, he's, he's teaching me to play by the book. And I was like, ah, I just want to play what I think sounds good. So I, did, I, I didn't have the teacher anymore. And I just taught myself how to play. And it was really about a couple months and then three, four months and was playing my own songs. And I remember my parents were like, uh, I didn't say anything to them. And they're like, hey, you're actually sound pretty good. <laughs> and how, <laughs> how old are you here? You're 10 years old? Or you're 13, 13. 13 wow. and 14. And, and, uh, and I feel bad today, but. There was only one guitar that was our grandpa's guitar. And so we both, I started playing at the same time as David, of course. Guitar too. Um, because we were just like, oh, that's so cool. We got to do that. Um, and uh, so we both started at the same time, but I would try and practice. And every time I'm trying to pl- practice, David's like, just, just like 15, 20 more minutes. And it'd be like another hour. And I'm just like, I guess I'm not playing guitar today. I'm going to go do something else. So eventually I got a drum set. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, that's how we made that work. So that's your preferred instrument, drums, guitar. Yeah, I like, I yeah. like, I like, I, I, you know, I, I like singing and playing guitar equally the best. Um, and and I mean, songwriting, I, I guess it's, I guess it's not, I guess it is part of playing, but yeah, it's, yeah. I like songwriting equally. And the, yeah. the Nick, even like on a recent podcast we did with Matt Sorum from Guns N' Roses, that was so special because, you know, he was in Vol Revolver and he was mm-hmm. one of the reasons. The, we started playing when I heard the song Slither. So you meet your like your led, meet your icon, one of yeah. your icons, and that was Nick's favorite drummer. So just you mm-hmm. know, Nick got the chance to sit down with them and everything like that. And yeah, that was really. What cool. was that like beating Matt Storm? Man, that was really <laughs> cool because it was like I remember, of course, like the Slither video, all the Velvet Revolver stuff and everything like that. But we had this uh, Guns and Roses live in, um, I believe it was Japan, Tokyo, yeah, live in Tokyo video. I think it was. It might have been a DVD, it might have been a VHS, but we might have both. But um, at one point, we had got that, and I just remember watching them play that show just going crazy. And it was just like, that's, I mean, that's the coolest person ever. That's the coolest thing you could ever do. That's what I got to do. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. Was, that, was, that was super inspiring. And um, I remember after was playing the guitar a lot, and different friends and family members were like, um, oh, this is really good. And I remember I was at, at, at school one day, and they're like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And everyone was like saying they want to be a doctor. I'd like to be a fireman. I said, I want to grow up and be, you know, big rock star. And and they're like, oh, so what do you really want to do? <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but that's... But, but, what, what's your B plan? You have to have yeah. a B plan. But that, Jesus that's Christ, what if said. I haven't had I, that I never, conversation I never had a... a, a, a Plan B, you know. I always knew there was a you way can't. to make it work. Plan B is Plan A, and, and exactly. Uh, but shortly after, I started playing and had different uh, groups and band names and stuff. And then, you know, um, and then I put, um, you know, all the there was all these these names on a paper, and and I thought Black Oxygen was the coolest because it sounded out of all of them more dangerous, like Black Oxygen, like Black Edgy. Air, you know. And and uh, metal, and I was playing with all these metal, yeah. people, and I was realizing sometimes the best thing is you don't realize is right in front of you. And so I was playing with other kids and the drums, and and Nick Nick was a great drummer, and he's we lived together, so we started that's that we started playing together, mm. and uh, you know, and Black Auction was officially formed, and and at the start too, you know. Um, there was a, a battle of the bands, the Midwest. We won first place. There was a guitar competition, won first place. And then I... Um, and how old were you in the, at this This point? was This was like 17. Okay. You know, like... And you're still living 18, in Kansas 19, City at this point. Yeah. 20, okay. you know, this is like a recap from 15 or whatever, moving on uh, over the ages. And then, and then um, there was a... Uh, when we did this battle of the bands... I would always write my phone number on the CD, you know. And when you're when you grow up in Kansas, and I remember back in the day when people, you know, I've talked to Wes Scanlon before, and he grew up in a band called Puddle of Mud, and it, your chances sometimes could be slim to none to get picked up there. I mean, because everyone is here in Los Angeles, you know. So I just figured if I'm going to play and do the best show every show, whether there's five people or 500 or 20,000 in the room. 
I'm, I don't, you never know who might watch, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so there was a show and I remember there was a guy that got a CD of ours from the Uptown Theater and he happened to be there. You know, fast forward to two or three months later, um, got a call from um, um, some music producers out in Los Angeles and they're like, hey, this is about 10 years ago, or whatever. They're like, hey, we're, we're out in Los Angeles um, at Red Bull Studio, Santa Monica just opened up, you know, love the demo. We're all staying at the Renaissance Hotel in Hollywood. That was before it was the W Hotel now on right off Hollywood Boulevard. Mm. And the, and they said, uh, you know, you're a talented kid, Lose. so we'd like you and your brother to come out for the duration of the album for like whatever the six, seven, eight months, whatever, however long. I don't remember exactly however long they were working, work, they were working on it. And um, so when I we came in and flew and we met at the Red Bull Studio Santa Monica and met some great producers. Uh, I will say the names of the producers because they're knowns, but like Chef Tone, mm. this guy Eric Hudson, Troy Taylor, all these great producers, and this guy Carlos McCullers, who worked with Tupac, and all and and all these people, and they they um they were like they're top tier of the world. Work Michael Jackson, you know, yeah, absolutely. all these all these great albums, and and then uh, at that point, I don't think I mean now it's like I met every everyone. I could have dreamt of and and but I that was like I think at that time Jamie Foxx was the first big superstar I met so I remember he came out of the music control room and they're like hey Jamie this is Dave and Nick Lyle Black Oxygen um and at that point we've had you know kind of recordings it wasn't nothing significant to what we have today it was you know you know at the time we weren't fine tune like it production and songwriting it was kind of like the the roots of you know just starting we're still out. kids yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so so uh so i i, I at, at westlake studios and at red bull studios and um I, it was really cool to sit in and they're like you could just hang out jamie fox is going to be on everyday recorders um so it was cool just to watch the process. What was that like being a kid from Kansas City and now you're sitting in a studio watching an amazing performer like Jamie Foxx? Just right. It was, it was an eye-opening album. moment because, um, you know... Fresh out of high school too, right? Yeah, it was, at, at the time it was, yeah. uh, you know, I guess for anyone it would be, but, you know, it's like now it's a normal thing, but at, at then I was thinking, you know, you actually kind of get a little excitement, some chills, like, well... But then you realize, you know, everyone's a human being. Everyone's, you know, everyone's on a, is on their journey. When I was said and done there, I was like, well, I'm gonna, you know, go my own way now. And I'm, I'm, I got all these songs, and my brother and I were gonna start releasing our own content and stuff. There was a, a big manager that picked us up that was out of Detroit, and um, we we got a call that. And are you guys living in LA at this point? In or? Kansas City. You're still living yeah. in Kansas. City. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. went back from LA. You went yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, in Kansas, Kansas City. Okay. So, so we we had got a call. We were going to open uh, the show called Rock Fest in Kansas City, which at the time was one of the biggest rock festivals in the country. It's it was the biggest one day rock festival okay. in the it country. It was like yeah. I think it was sixty five thousand people or something. So rest in peace, Rock Fest. Yeah, Slash was on the bill. <laughs> all these all these amazing huge artists, and uh, there's photos on our on our social media. But it's a sea of people. Like you know, you look out and it's really like it's an ocean. Yeah. So that was that was a really cool experience, and once you kind of the door opens, you meet a lot of people, and we we got invited on a lot of tours, and we always put on a good show, and we were always professional. And what was that like performing for sixty five thousand people? You know, to be honest, uh, the more crowd, the more relaxed it is. <laughs> really, to me, there's um, just more energy to feed off of, it, and just reciprocate. Yeah, it's just it's a lot more fun and. After that, we put our own content out and stuff in our, our own music, and we dropped a cover of Post Malone's Rockstar. So we did like a more rock version. I remember I was even at the Whiskey A Go Go one night. This big bouncer walked up to me, and I was th- I thought I was get, honestly getting in trouble for something or something <laughs> like oh, I'd, but that he's like walk with me, and I was like where are we walking? And he said well, <laughs> we we were just talking to Post Malone. He's in the VIP booth over there. Um, we told him, he, you know, you guys did this amazing remake. We're playing it to him. He just wants to 
you hang out and do some shots together. So, so, um, <laughs> all right. So, shots of Post Malone. So, right. so, so, uh, but I just remember I was like, he was like, hey, let me see the video again. I was showing it to him on my phone and stuff. And he's like, that's, he's like, that, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. And, 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 uh, but, but at that time, there was a president of a company, record company that was newer called Curtain Call. And they were like, had this connection with the Orchard and Sony. And, and they, um, Said, hey, you know that we saw this this thing's taken off. We'd like to offer you guys a record deal to, you know, financially back your album and tour and stuff. And 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 um, so we put out an album with them called "The Times of Our Lives." And there was like a normal version, and then a deluxe edition version. And the deluxe edition, you know, had like um, it had um, Shifty's actually on one of the songs on an, that album a few years back, "Crazy Town." It had like uh, uh, this other, you know, Tech Nine was on there. You know, he's a he's a legend, and there's a music video with him. But there was like 27 songs on it, tons of songs and tons of collaborations. There was all types of touring. If we had to take a guess from how many shows we've done, I mean, it's probably like five. It's it's a lot. I don't even hundreds know. and hundreds, hundreds yeah, of shows, definitely, and tours and stuff over the years. But and then we did that record deal for a one album deal, and then. Um, stylistically producing and, and, and writing and the switching the styles up, you know, just to the music. We all, you know, really loved like more like pop and there was more rap hip hop elements uh, with mainstream vibes too. And there was a EP we, we put out the right now EP. And then um, there was a, a short film that we did too with Danny trail. And, and that was, you know, acting has been something that I thought would always be fun. So to like do something with him and it won a few like film festival awards and stuff, which is great. As we're going through that journey, I noticed on our Facebook page, there was uh, a guy stretch. It was like in a lot of our posts and we knew him from Kansas city cause he's from there, but he has a award-winning restaurant called grinders and it's world famous from on diners. What's it called? Uh, diners, drive-ins and dives with, yeah, with, it with with uh, Guy Fieri, Guy Fieri, and so um, Stretch was like, "Hey, let's let's do something creative together." You guys got the wheels turning. He's like, "I keep seeing you go up over time, so this seems like this would be a good investment." You guys are really good at falling upwards. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> when Nick grew up, uh, his 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 friend's father, you know, that unfortunately passed away, was was a partner, a, a chef of of. Uh, Wolfgang Puck. And I recently, not long ago, got to meet Wolfgang Puck and I got him some of a barbecue sauce as well because he asked for it. But um, Nick Nick always is an amazing cook, for those who don't know, amazing chef. <laughs> and I said, well, Nick can make an amazing barbecue sauce. That'd be something cool. And, and uh, you know, Stretch had all these plugs to, you know, because he's had award-winning sauces. Well, that's that's pretty exactly how it went too. Because and David, when did it come together? How long ago? How long has the sauce so, been? Or, the or what was the process been? of making it? Because I remember Nick Nick made all these. We sauces. might have we might have had the sauce for about three years now. Okay. Yeah. But, two and, a half years. and you just made up their ingredient recipe yourself. <laughs> like messing around. <laughs> well, in the kitchen yeah. One day? So David, I mean, and to to me, barbecue sauce is like a sacred thing, right? Because in Kansas City, barbecue is a sacred thing, right? As it is in Texas and uh, you know much of the South, but. Uh, David told him, yeah, we can make a sauce. And it was just like, all right, we got to make a sauce. And I was like, <laughs> okay, all right, let's figure it out. We had, we had one friend that had, you know, made, made a lot of sauces. And he told me kind of the basics of it um, back before this had happened. And I just kind of knew a little bit, but it was like, okay, so this is like people spend their whole lives perfecting their barbecue sauce. Like they're like, Pass down family generations recipes, things yeah. like that. And David's <laughs> telling me to make a sauce, and I got like a week and a half, <laughs> and we're doing this short film at the same time, and we're doing like five other things at the same time. And I'm like, I do remember okay. when the sauce was made. There was like 15 different big pans of it in the kitchen. Yeah, it was stuff. literally. I was like, all right, I gotta go get <laughs> all the ingredients I can think of. I just like looked at a bunch of different recipes, and I was like okay, this is how people make sauce. And I was like, let's just start from there. I'm going to make these, I'm going to make five random batches of different ones and see what they taste like and figure out why they taste like it, what these 
ingredients are changing the profiles, what it's like hot versus cold, what it's like on McDonald's and Burger King and In-N-Out and pizza and chicken and like anything I could think of. I was doing everything I could think of to try and test everything and get everything. And, and, but it starts with, you know, learning what the ingredients are going to be like when it's cooked. Cause I've never made barbecue sauce before this. Like I always like making food, but you know, it started with grilling and then I've, I've, since learned to do a bunch more stuff, I love cooking. But um, and then I made nine batches of the one that we were trying to build, um, and I think we went with like the f- sixth one or the eighth one, or it was sixth or seventh. It was like two or three away from yeah, the final and batch. We there, went back. There was no guarantee, and it and, came out good. <laughs> and it's like um, it started out in a few spots in Kansas City, and then it was in some different barbecue competitions, and now it's one to be exact. It just won first place, like. Four months ago, mm-hmm. in this other barbecue competition, it won two years ago, fourth in the whole U.S. for the National Barbecue and Grilling Association. Mm-hmm. Second place at Zest Fest Fiery Foods Challenge. It's in Walmart online. You get it at different Shields locations in stores in the country. It's at, at many stores it's in some different the, restaurants across as well. The country, you know, if you go to the Rainbow Room, and it only took a week. <laughs> <laughs> if, you to, if you go to the Rainbow Room on Sunset Strip, they have it there. If you go to the spot Vividly on Sunset Strip, they have our own pizza there, a black auction of banging barbecue pizza. Go try it out. You know, there's all types of setbacks and, and um, you know, What's one a, you can a, think? Funny, a funny story of a setback was, so we've toured and had all types of wild experiences on the road and after the shows and <laughs> there's all types of experiences but there was one particular funny one. We were on a tour, and it was earlier on, so it was it was wasn't like it was like a super nice bus or anything or whatever. But we were in a we were in a, 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 an RV, and we were. Nick will tell the story what happened. Yeah, that was our first RV, and we had um, <laughs> someone on the tour crew driving. But I'm sitting behind behind the guy, so the driver's right here. And David's David's just taking a shower, so he's like just coming out. There's like five other guys kind of sorted around the RV, and <laughs> I'm just sitting here, and he's just like, "Oh fuck!" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> it was like, "What's <laughs> happening?" And he was just like, "Hold on, guys!" <laughs> and I was I was in the shower, and he, and, he, and, and, he, and all of a sudden the whole the whole uh, all. <laughs> He gasses it, and and what's All happening was, on the ju- outside? Ju- 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 if we were on the outside ju- ju- staring, that we're going through a bridge <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> that is not tall top. enough for this oh RV. Oh my it, gosh! It's like this doesn't clear that that much. And, and like, I was and and I was um and up in the Upper East Coast, everything is it's just shorter there. And like we're in, I think we're in Connecticut, but it's like it's shorter up there. And the everyone because it's all older, right? And there's there's smaller roads and everything. And we just go through this this small bridge, and it's just like he's hitting it. And it's like it's cracking all the way down. And there's like the scene of I, Alien yeah, versus was, Predator the where the big one is coming through and like crashing all down. And it was like. <laughs> Like dust it was, and rocks. It was, it was really loud. David's it, David's yeah, coming the out the shower, the and shower. The, the air conditioner unit on. is right in front of the shower, and yeah, he yeah. like he comes out and he's like, "What's going on?" It goes, yeah, and it like and, slams and, it and in and the I, head, I, I and then it rips straight yeah. back out, and it's like, <laughs> and it flies onto the trailer yeah. behind us. Yeah, yeah. So so I was I I had um, wow ran to the back and I was ducking because I looked through the front and the you could see that. The, the the tunnel. I mean, like, did you get whole, time to throw a towel on? Was whole, it just your bare thing. ass? Yeah, he just, had a, he just had a towel. He just had a towel. He gets slammed in the, the head. Whole, that he's running through. Like the ah! whole the whole front was like the whole top was was getting ripped off, of the, shattering. So, and he's so, still driving. He's so, not stopping. He's still driving because he realized he was like, we're short enough to get under here. If I if <laughs> I don't make it. floor it, he was like, yeah. He was like, we we either we're gonna be stuck under here, just completely lost, or we're gonna push through. <laughs> And, and this wasn't. This was. You have to keep uh, in mind. This, probably should have stopped. This is not exaggerating uh, any part of the story <laughs> as well. This is fact. But we were going like like sixty miles, sixty five miles an hour. <laughs> and uh, I just remember I walked out and I was, I was. This was all in fast time. This wasn't like a, a long case. But <laughs> I walked out and I looked and I I see that there's, uh, there's a back window, and all of a sudden I saw like there's cars behind us. And the, the the whole AC unit. You know, this is this is it could it could actually everyone has fear could, in their eyes. Yeah, we're like, where's the AC? Was this it, it giant could, hole it, in the it, ceiling? It, it could truly actually probably kill somebody. <laughs> it, it flew off. 
And there's a car. Yeah, like, if that thing would have came straight down, that might have like, crushed David. Like, there's a car. But but I was really thankful that I I didn't get hit because it really could have, I mean, it severely injured me. And, um, you know, it, it, after. And then after, after of course, after, we're like limping away and it starts to rain. Yeah, and we and, have all so these we had to pull into fresh a, holes and cracks Walmart. across the thing. Well, and we, we had, pulled into a Home Depot that was right down the way and I was like, okay. Um, let's get some sheet metal. Let's get some caulking. <laughs> let's just try and seal it back up. together. <laughs> yeah, literally, we 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 had bungee cords and a tarp on there for like fifty miles till we got to the show, and then it was like, all right, dump the stuff. I gotta go Home Depot. <laughs> like, oh my gosh! But there's always but, struggles. But but yeah, that was one of those stories. And then it started to rain. Then you put the tarp on. But there's also, you know, shows or or deals that you know you hope for and they don't happen and. Used to take you know like a, you know a lot to the heart when it didn't happen. But now I was like you know what's for me is for me and but you know I'm also extremely persistent, as you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, and and so and are. so there's you know there's different people do ask say how did those all these cool things happen? How are they happening? A lot. Of, so, I mean a lot of them people will, people uh, will get around us when they're making music or hanging out and they're like. Just good energy. I like working together. Uh, let's do this. Or someone will hear about our music and reach out to us online. Um, and and some things I it's it's like something I'll be inspired and I'll go after and I'm determined and I, I'll make it happen. You know, but that's I think that's the most important thing. And then with all those things going, you know, I believe in you know like the universe and you know a higher power and. I feel like that we're all here for a reason and there's a bigger picture and yeah. It it really has been a journey and mm-hmm. I don't want anyone to think that it was easy to get here because there's there's more times that 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 most people would have quit. The best advice I could give is you know, have a positive mindset um and when you play your shows and when you play your music you know, put your heart in your soul whether there's 500 or 5 per- people out there um, and nowadays it's, you know, your shots a lot of times are better online. So, you know, make the best song you can and load it to YouTube. It's important to enjoy the journey because every day, mm-hmm. you know, I, I even say in a song, uh, so get the fuck out of my way, you know, cause you can't, you, uh, uh, you can't buy time. I say, get the fuck out of my way. If you're going to waste one time, cause that's the one thing that I can't buy. Cause it worked a lot of years, shed some tears, moved up in the game, conquered all our demons, and now we see clear. Music is my therapy. Some say I'm contrary. I don't see what you see, so why don't you leave me be? So now that I'm relaxing, you heard what's on my mind. Move to the stereo and that flow and the rhyme. So let's go. All right. Well, you guys, thanks so much for coming out. And Jack, coming you. here. Happy to be here. Everyone, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we appreciate all the support out there. Much love. Uh, be looking for Black Auction on tour, a new album coming. Thanks again for supporting the Butterfly. Peace. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs>